Good day, Dan Davis, ADK Wealth Advisory Group, Financial Planning World, co-founder, president, extraordinaire. And all kidding aside, today's focus of Investment Planning 301 Part 3, what we're going to really do is a, a deeper dive into some concepts that we've talked about in Investment Planning 101 and then the, the 301 Part 1, Part 2. Focus really is around uh, whitewater rafting, sailing, and the timing of all that. So let's, let's kind of put some context to that. In uh, Investment Planning 101, you heard me talk about uh, a baseball metaphor in that what we're really doing in investment planning is monitoring the investment cycle and thinking of it metaphorically like a baseball game and that we know baseball games go nine innings. Uh, I'm not a huge baseball guy, but being from St. Louis, it's, uh, it's hard not to love the Cardinals. All you Cubs fans out there, we, we know you love us. The, the baseball games, as you know, while they're nine innings, we don't really know how long that is. It's not like football where it's a certain amount of time. Sometimes nine inning goes, stretches out longer, sometimes it comes back quicker. But in the, the economic cycle, you have the, the recovery, we'll call that early stage, and then you have the middle stage, the late stage, and then the end stage, which always has a recession inside of it. And, it, and when you think about that, <clears throat> the, the concept of white water rafting would, it, would mean that we're doing a lot more things. If you think of white water rafting, you're paddling a lot because there's a lot of turbulence that you're going through. So early in an economic recovery, um, you're, you're sort of what I would classify as finishing the white water rafting and you're getting ready to transition into sailing. Uh, at the middle stage of an economy, you're really just sailing. There's not as much to do. It's like when you're sailing, you're tacking, you're getting your, your sails set up to get proper efficiency from the overall uh, wind. And same thing, we're just making sure we've got the right equities and the right kind of bonds so that the market conditions propel them. When you get to that late economic stage is where you really start the most preparation because one never knows when the, a recession will come. But when you start to get late in an economic cycle, you know it will come. It always does. If you do post-World War II, call it 1945 to today, which is June of 2021, we've had 13 recessions in that period of time. And it's, it's preparing for that so that by the time the end stage comes that you aren't taken by surprise and reacting. So what are the kind of things that one does in that late stage? Let's first talk uh, with the safer money, the bonds, the cash, stuff like that. Uh, what we start to do, and there's not a way that's right and all the others are wrong, this is just our style, we start to say, okay, we want to reduce our exposure to credit risk, so high yield type bonds, emerging market debt, things of that nature. We start to shift away from that and then go more towards investment grades. So we're, we're doing what you classify as reducing credit risk and increasing interest rate risk. Since, since there's no way to know through a crystal ball the exact timing, we do that in a phasing. So I'll give you an example. The, the summer of 2019, so call it Q2, we had no idea that a recession was gonna happen in 2020, March, but we knew it was, it was coming. And so we had emerging market bonds, we had um, high yield bonds, we had three different mutual funds. And so basically what we did is we, we in the summer of 19, we sold one and bought an investment grade bond. In December of 19, we did the same kind of a thing. We wanted to get the third done, but candidly did not because uh, we thought that the recession was going to be much further out than what it was, and so it came sooner. We weren't able to do it. Uh, however, in the grand scheme of things, two out of three we were pretty happy with. The other thing, again, we're still talking late in the cycle. We start to say, okay, we're, we're going to start to reduce our equity exposure. And maybe at that time, a growth with income model had 65 or even 70% equities. We'll start again, phasing that down to somewhere between 50 and 60. Some of it will depend on valuations. 
Some of it will depend on what's happened with returns. There's a lot of variables. There's not a, a, a science of a two plus two equals four kind of math equation that gives you an answer. There's a lot of art to it and researched guessing. And that's why they always require you to say that investing requires taking risk because one never really knows. Now, as we shift from that uh, late stage into the end stage, that's where the recession occurs. That's where all the real significant damage that's long lasting occurs. It's almost like um, if you're, if you're going to take a look at bond defaults and company bankruptcies, the majority of them, not all, but the majority happen in or because of that. Very seldom do you see a company go bankrupt in the midst of a raging economic growth cycle. It's, it's normally when the, the rooster comes to roost. So that end stage, the kind of things that we're really doing is realizing we are white water rafting. It's full on. So one major decision that you're making is, are we going to reduce or even eliminate equity exposure? Um, are we going to, uh, at a certain point after we've made that decision, start to re-enter that money? So increasing equity exposure. And then when will we start to make the transition of moving from the, the interest rate risk, the high quality bonds we discussed, to more credit risk? Because a lot of those buying into risky assets happen before the dust has settled, if you will. So the storm appears to still be raging, but we're then uh, going to start moving money in because what you find is the, the markets typically, not always, will start to recover before the recession is even over. So you can't wait until that early recovery stage to be making these white water rafting decisions of, of re-entry. You have to make them in the midst of that end cycle. And that, that's, that's really where having a good system to help you make sense of how to, how to make decisions in the midst of chaos. And as I've alluded to, I'll say it again, and that is that there's no right way all the others are wrong. Uh, our investment committee uh, really debates and makes some decisions that you don't know until you are looking backward in time whether they're right or not. It's candidly, I find it very enjoyable, uh, especially when you're looking back to see whether or not it worked or not. Interesting, Goldman Sachs put out a article in 2020 through Market Watch. They went back and looked at all the recessions dating back to 1835, and then they categorized them in three uh, areas. One was structural, like the 2008 financial crisis. Two is cyclical. Quite simply, the economy just runs out of steam. Sometimes it's aided by or hurt by the Fed policy of tightening interest rates, so contractionary policy that sort of forces it. And then the, the last was event driven, like the, the March of 2020 COVID. There's also the 1973 OPEC uh, oil embargo recession that occurred. I would add a fourth, and that is what I call the double dip. It doesn't happen very often, but if you go back into 1980, 1982, you saw a recession occur, we looked like we were in that early stage of recovery and then another recession happens. That one is a brutal because you've started to move money back in probably uh, and then boom, that happens. Luckily, I was still in high school at the time, so I didn't have to make those decisions. But, uh, but know that as you are a consumer or some of you are financial advisors, that those kind of decisions are tough and uh, there's no right answer. So in summary, as, as, you, as we think about making decisions uh, at that 301 level, what we're really talking about is following the economic cycle so that we can kind of evaluate, do we feel like we're at the early recovery? Do we feel like we're mid, late, end? And then we're making decisions of increasing and decreasing risk and the, the white water rafting, we're not going to be actively trading throughout the higher, uh, entire economic cycle, but there are periods where we will be very tactical. And then there's other periods that are more like sailing that we're just going to let the market conditions sort of take care of everything. So I appreciate you taking the time today to listen to our view on 301 Part 3 Investment Planning. 
If you are a client and you found this to be beneficial, appreciate it if you would forward this over to someone who you might think could be a potential client of ADK Wealth Advisory Group. Um, if you're a financial advisor connected to the financial planning world, appreciate you sharing your best practices with us and, uh, and connecting in. So signing off from the St. Louis office, Dan Davis, have a great day.